over. Three-pointer for Juan. Good! There's your money. Catch it! Four with five goes to Wyatt with four. Wyatt pulls back out for a three. Good! Here's Wyatt. Penetrates down the lane. Lays it off for House Jefferson. Slam dunk finish. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's me again. Here we go. Here we go. I guess I win. Like all the time, and the block against the blackboard. Here's Fernandez, bugs down low. Anthony, slam dunk. And he goes up for a shot. Oh, he made it. Like I'm Carmen San Diego. I'm smoking. I'm on fire. I am blazing. Don't get hurt. To my wife, this is a concert. To my black nurse, this is church. Anthony Lee, who shoots, he scores. He scores. He scores. What ball game? Strip by DeLeo, ahead of the pack, Aaron Brown, breakaway, do it, yes! This is wide on the wing, Jackson, another one, pass! Behind the back, what pass? Lee finishes off the good look! It has the feel of an upset in Philly! Aaron Brown for three, good! Six on the clock, Ramon in the lane, Hollis Jefferson's jumper, good! A huge jump shot by Hollis Jefferson! Has stolen by DeLeo. He's got one man to break, and Jens, TJ, take it off. Back to Wyatt for a three. It's good. Michael Eric spins on again. Oh, a slam dunk. Big fella. Big, big fella. Ball. The big ball's back. It's it up with the shot. A block the fourth of the night by Michael Eric. Jake looks to penetrate. Jake pulls back out. 15 footer on the way. You said he could shoot, John. You said it. Jimmy McDonald for a jumper. It's good. Lays it off the tender grass with the slide jump dunk by Big Nick. Each season of college basketball begins the same way. Every team starts with a clean slate, widespread optimism, and often find themselves trying to figure out how to replace those departed from the year before. The story of the 2011-2012 Temple Owls begins as any other basketball story would. The Owls entered the season with high expectations, coming off their fourth straight NCAA tournament appearance. But this year's newfound challenge was about filling a void left by Lavoy Allen, one of the best players in program history. Though Allen's presence is a tough thing to make up for, Temple returned four starters. And with the three-headed monster of Juan Fernandez, Ramon Moore, and Khalif Wyatt at guard, and Michael Eric and Ralier Hollis Jefferson in the front court, the Owls had plenty of veteran leadership to continue success on North Broad. Temple's season on the court began as any Philadelphia teams should, with a game against an inner city rival at the historic Palestra. Head coach Fran Dumphy took his house four miles away from home to visit his former team, the Penn Quakers, and their senior Big Five Player of the Year candidate, Zach Rosen. It came as no surprise to anyone that the first game of the city series needed overtime to be decided. For Temple, the bigger the moments, the better senior guard Ramon Moore played. And the three-point dagger he made to put away the Quakers for win number one served as the perfect foreshadowing of the high level of play he would show his whole senior season. The next three-game stretch took the Owls to beautiful San Juan, Puerto Rico, a welcome tropical trip at the end of a chilly November. Temple opened the five-hour energy Puerto Rico tip-off with a win against Western Michigan in a game that saw all five Temple starters reach double figures in scoring, along with a career-high 15 rebounds for senior center Michael Eric. 
The next day at the Coliseo de Puerto Rico wasn't as kind for the Owls, who dropped a tightly contested ball game to the Purdue Boilermakers 85-77, despite a game-high 27 points for Ramon Moore. The players and coaches spent Saturday taking in the sights of old San Juan, but before long, it was back to the practice court, preparing for the Wichita State Shockers. Ramon Moore would again pace the Owls, scoring six of his 23 points in overtime to lead the Cherry and White to victory and a third place finish in the early season tournament. The Owls returned stateside with a three and one record, but in the first game back from Puerto Rico, they lost to Bowling Green on the road in the first of many games playing without Michael Eric, who suffered a knee injury in practice. Injuries are part of basketball, but when you lose a player like Eric, and a tremendous leader like Scooty Randall, who missed the entire season. The pressure gets put on the rest of the roster to make up for the intangibles that they provide on and off the floor. A little home cooking was all Temple needed to get back on track as they defeated Central Michigan 86-74 behind a career-high 21 points off the bench from sophomore Aaron Brown. Uh, with five rebounds down at the other end, Brown penetrates, lays it up and in. And 23 points and seven assists from junior guard Khalif Wyatt. The win over the Chippewas set the Leocor Center record for most consecutive victories with 23. And it was the first of three straight wins for Temple who defeated Mac opponent Toledo on the road before coming home to play city rival Villanova in front of a sold-out Leocorus Center and a national audience on ESPN2. Anytime Villanova comes to North Philadelphia to play, it's no friendly environment. And just because the holidays were only a few weeks away didn't mean these two were about to exchange any holiday cheer. DeLeo swings it over to Wyatt for a deep three. Good! Oh, boy. Closest guy to him was Jay Wright. It's two on two. Down low, the layup by Bell is good. And it is a three-point Villanova lead at 30-27. to 27. Big games require big performances from your best players. And for Ramon Moore, big games make his eyes light up. Moore gets a screen from Hollis Jefferson. Ramon dribbling, now will pull up for a long shot and banked in a three. Oh, boy. Moore still dribbles, now in the lane, up with the runner, it's good! Oh, Ramon with 25! 10-point Temple lead. After eight ties and 11 lead changes, Moore spearheaded a 10-to-nothing Temple run and finished with a career-high 32 points. Temple never looked back from there and defeated the Wildcats 78-67. A week later, the Owls traveled out west for a Texas two-step, beginning with a tough test against the Longhorns of the University of Texas. Temple was defeated in its first game in the Lone Star State, 77-65, but recovered two days later to beat the other Owls from Rice University, 77-70 behind 23 points from senior guard Juan Fernandez, who, like Moore in the previous game, joined Temple's 1,000-point club. Temple returned home after the holiday break with a 7-3 record, and on a night where Moore and Fernandez were honored pregame for their 1,000-point milestones, it was the youngest player on the floor who would make the biggest shot. A tightly contested game with the Buffalo Bulls from start to finish would again take the Owls into overtime, where redshirt freshman Anthony Lee was in the right place at the right time for his only basket of the night. Here we go. Owls inbound, 29 left. Tied at 85. Wyatt on the dribble with nine. Still 25 feet out with six. Wyatt pulls up. Three ball. No good. Rebound. Two seconds. Oh, Anthony Lee stole it. Laid it up. Three tenths of a second left. Desperation shot is short. Anthony Lee wins the game. 87 85 Owls wow. in overtime. Giving Temple a wild 87 85 victory in front of its home crowd. Everybody's up here at the Leo Corson. 35 seconds left. Shot clock is off. Holding for one. 20 seconds left, 19, 18, 17. Fernandez still dribbling with 12, with 11, now they'll start at 10. Wyatt on the dribble with nine. 
Fernandez with six. Looks up at the shot clock. Five left. Goes to Wyatt with four. Wyatt. Two seconds. Oh, Anthony Lee stole it. Played it up. Pulls back out for a three. Go! Three-pointer for Juan. Good! There's your money. Cash it. Go to the bank. Make the withdrawal. Tight ball games would be a bit of a theme for this year's squad, but the Owls sported a flair for the dramatic. Coming out on top in many of the games, it came down to the final possession. The Owls' short trip down I-95 to the University of Delaware was no different, except maybe for which players led the Owls to victory. Key contributions, like a three-pointer from freshman guard Will Cummings, a steal and breakaway dunk from junior point guard T.J. DeLeo, and a season-high 13 points and eight rebounds from forward Ralir Hollis-Jefferson secured a tight 66-63 win over the Blue Hens. The new year brought the Owls perhaps the most exciting game of the season, a matchup against the third-ranked Duke Blue Devils at the Wells Fargo Center. In front of more than 20,000 fans, Temple rose to the occasion and shocked the nation. Brown wide open three, got it! beating Mike Krzyzewski's Blue Devils 78-73, despite being vastly outsized. Five outs scored in double figures, but nobody had a bigger game than Khalif Wyatt, who scored perhaps the six biggest points of his career on consecutive possessions, giving Temple a nine-point lead they would not relinquish. To Wyatt for a three ball. Good! Great extra pass for Moan Moore. They're going to spread the floor and use some clock. Moore gives it up to Hollis Jefferson, now to Wyatt. Just had a big three. Wyatt will try another one. Got it! Oh, baby! NBA three. He's got 22, and everybody's up. 78-73. It's all over. It is all over. The five-point upset marked the fourth straight year the Owls knocked off a top-ten opponent. And fourth straight year, Temple's fans celebrated a victory on the court with their team. Uh, and they say all I rap about the champagne you would to a fairy night you seen the same thing money wall to wall young famous spin it all when you die you can't take it with you bottle of rose if i'm drinking with you because most is broke they bank is injured them gonna ride with who they think's a winner and i'll be smiling in case they take a picture uh. Temple took a 10-3 record into the beginning of Atlantic 10 play, but despite that, and a 25-game winning streak at the Leah Coors Center, A-10 competition didn't start the way the Owls hoped. Khalif Wyatt's second straight huge game wasn't enough to overcome the Dayton Flyers, who beat the Owls 87-77, proving above all else that this year's A-10 conference is full of solid teams. 
The Owls would split the next two conference games, first picking up a huge win on the road against St. Louis, who hadn't lost in their building all season. Ramon Moore and Khalif Wyatt combined for 40 points to beat the Billikens. Temple fell in his next contest to a young Richmond team who held the Owls to just 37% shooting. Khalif Wyatt had his fourth consecutive game scoring at least 22 points, but his team couldn't mount a comeback in Virginia. Resiliency was the name of the Owls game in 2012, and the Richmond loss proved to be the last stumble for a while. Temple began quite a run, winning 11 straight games that spanned the next 36 days. That's the longest winning streak for the Cherry and White in 12 years. The first team on the Owls' chopping block was Cross City rival LaSalle. The Owls got out to a 14-13 lead and never trailed for the final 33 minutes. Hesitation dribble, leaves it back. Zach blocked by Fernandez. Darren Brown for three, good! Relier Hollis Jefferson pays Temple with a career-high 19-point performance. Philadelphia didn't see much snow this winter. But Temple's next contest was on a snow-covered Saturday morning against Maryland in the sold-out Palestra, the team's final non-conference regular season game. The three-headed monster combined for 54 points, while Temple dished 20 assists as a team. Goes to Fernandez on the right wing, right sideline. Moore will try a deep three, and it's good! Oh, my! Ramon Moore with 18. And the 73-60 victory over the Terrapins. The game was important for more than just the win. It saw the return of senior center Michael Eric, who had missed the previous 13 games. Eric may not have contributed much on the stat sheet in this one, but it wasn't long until his presence was once again felt in the middle. Temple made quick work of Charlotte on the road, jumping out to a 17-1 lead and never losing its edge, winning 79-65 before returning home to play yet another Philly school, St. Joseph's. Temple's standout seniors controlled the first half of the St. Joe's game, as Ramon Moore, Juan Fernandez, and Michael Eric combined for all 38 of Temple's points. Now we'll pull up for a three, and it's it. The Owls never gave up the lead and breezed by the Hawks for the 10th straight time, 78 to 60. February began as January ended with an identical 78 to 60 win, this time over the Fordham Rams at the Leacourt Center. Temple followed the lead of Ramon Moore, whose six three-pointers and 25 points helped to improve the team's overall record to 16 and five. Two more wins on the road against Rhode Island and a huge comeback victory at home against George Washington would set up a primetime A-10 matchup, pitting Temple against perennial conference powerhouse Xavier. The Leocura Center was dressed in all white for the 9 p.m. tip-off, and the atmosphere was electric as the Owls flexed their conference-leading muscles in front of a national audience. Ramon Moore once again shied in a big game, scoring 30 points, while Michael Eric added 11 and a career-high 16 rebounds. Into the hands of Moore. Moore is looking to score. He's up with the eight-footer. It's good. Ramon Moore putting on a show tonight. He's got 26. The fans in white went home happy as the Owls kept Xavier guard two Holloway in check and took their eighth straight game, 85-72. Temple picked up two more wins, first on the road against upstart St. Bonaventure, 76-70, before coming home to dismantle Duquesne, 78-59 on Hooter the Owls' birthday. Juan Fernandez connected on six three-pointers as he scored 20 points and added six assists, becoming just the sixth player in Temple history to score 1,000 career points and dish 400 career assists. Ten straight wins led to Temple's first national ranking of the season, a spot at number 22 in both polls. But the last opponent to care about your ranking is a city opponent, and Temple's next game against LaSalle at Tom Gola Arena would be one of the crazier finishes of the year. A nip and tuck game saw LaSalle take a 50 to 49 lead over Temple before Khalif Wyatt quieted the Explorer entourage. Here's a steal, Wyatt goes streaking to the bucket and dunks it. Five straight points for Khalif Wyatt who stepped it up here. Wyatt a deep NBA three, it's good. How about this guy?
20 points for Wyatt. Wyatt drives, shoots, and scores. He scored 10 straight, and it's 59-50 Temple. But LaSalle would not go away, and due in large part to guard Earl Pettis' 33-point game, the two Philly teams found themselves deadlocked at 71 and going to overtime. Five straight points for Ramon Moore gave the Owls a two-point lead. But true to Big Five form, the game would come down to the final possession. LaSalle down a point with the ball. 80-79 to 79 Temple. With eight, seven, six. Pettis for a three. No good. Rebound. D.J. Robinson over to corner. Mills for a three. No good. Temple holds on. The Owls escape with an 80-79 to 79 win in overtime, extending their streak to 11 games. Three days later was a tough night for Temple as the Owls fell to St. Joe's at Hagen Arena, 82-72. Despite the loss, Temple still won a share of the Big Five title with a 3-1 and record. And they were the only city school to defeat all four of its Philadelphia rivals this season. Still, Temple's 11-game winning streak was over. The loss to St. Joe's did not drop Temple out of the top 25. Instead, the Owls were ranked 23rd going into senior night against Massachusetts. Before the game, Temple honored its four seniors for their outstanding contributions to the program. Ramon Moore, Juan Fernandez, Michael Eric, and Jake Godino, who made his first career start, have seen many victories in their time on North Broad Street. And it's only fitting that on a night in honor of their four years of service, they'd see victory number 100. Temple needed overtime to defeat UMass, whose up-tempo style of offense pushes the Owls as far as they could go. But in the end, it was Khalif Wyatt's 26 points, including 17 from the free throw line, that led the Owls to the win. The victory clinched Temple's first outright A-10 regular season championship since 1989-90. And after a photo with the Cherry Crusade, the team met at center court, as they do at the end of every home game, to explain one simple word, together. A reminder that whatever they do on the court, they do as a family. Temple concluded its regular season with a 20-point victory at Fordham. And with a 13-3 record in the Atlantic 10, the Owls finished with the top seed heading into the conference tournament in Atlantic City. AC has typically been good to Temple, but this season Lady Luck wasn't on their side. Just nine days after their first meeting, Temple had a rematch with UMass, but this one didn't go their way. Chaz Williams led the way for the Minutemen with 20 points and 10 assists and the Owls were eliminated from the conference tournament in the second round. Selection Sunday awarded Temple its second consecutive at-large bid to the NCAA tournament and fifth consecutive appearance overall. The Owls were selected as a five seed to face the winner of California and South Florida in Nashville, Tennessee. Temple soon learned its fate and would play the Bulls of South Florida in the second round of the NCAA tournament. The Owls held South Florida to just 11% shooting in the first half, yet only had a four-point lead. USF came out much sharper in the second half, building a 41-27 lead over the Owls, who would only get it as close as three before eventually falling to the Bulls 58-44. It was a disappointing end to the season and the careers of Temple seniors. An early exit wasn't something anyone wanted, but even in defeat, there is still much to take from a 24-win season for the Temple Owls. This team eclipsed the 20-win mark for the fifth straight season and spent the final three weeks of the year in the national rankings. Ramon Moore, Khalif Wyatt, and Juan Fernandez achieved all conference honors and head coach Fran Duffy won A-10 Coach of the Year. But above all the awards and achievements, the winning streaks and big game performances, this was a season united. The contributions of each Owl can't be overlooked. The production of Ramon Moore as the team's leading scorer, the leadership and decision-making of Juan Fernandez, the intimidating presence of Michael Eric in the middle, the offensive development of Khalif Wyatt, the gritty play of Verlier Hollis Jefferson, the emergence of Aaron Brown and Anthony Lee, the consistent hard work and shutdown defense of TJ DeLeo, the contributions from Will Cummings, the dedication of Jake Godino, the energy of Jimmy McDonald, the athleticism of Nick Pendergrass, the unwavering vocal leadership from Scooty Randall, and finally, the direction and leadership of head coach Fran Dunphy, who continues to help young men grow into good players 
and better people. As the book comes to a close in another season, this Temple team will be remembered for those leaving the nest and the lasting legacy Ramon Moore, Juan Fernandez, and Michael Eric have left over the last four years. For the Temple Owls, 2011-2012 will always be a senior story.